Thanks for coming out. Um, I, uh, in thinking about my portion of this uh, presentation, <clears throat> I had two audiences uh, in mind. Uh, the first group that I'm wanting to direct this to uh, are um, uh, faculty colleagues in economics, in STEM courses, basically in any discipline where in the lower level electives uh, that you'll be teaching, uh, there's a strong pressure to cover a lot of content, to deliver a lot of content to students. And there's also um, a need to help students in mastering the analytical tools of the course, which they often find uh, quite challenging. So with those two pressures uh, on us in teaching these courses, it feels really daunting uh, to do anything in the course that, that addresses um, student uh, writing. Um, uh, and yet, I think I figured out a way uh, to do it in a way that's been working for me, and I want to sort of share that approach and try to sort of sell it to you um, to, to adapt as you wish uh, uh, in your own courses. Um, and uh, as we go through the slides today, I hope my second audience, that is those of you who are uh, educational technologists, will be thinking about how um, you might use particular software or particular tricks, particular tools that you've developed over time to make the kind of approach that I'm doing work more effectively for students um, and faculty alike. Um, and then um, uh, I'll be happy to take your suggestions uh, 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 afterwards to be able to incorporate uh, into this uh, process. So um, I'm committed uh, to teaching uh, writing and have been for, for, for quite some time um, uh, because I actually think that uh, student writing is an effective tool for mastering the disciplinary analytics, the stuff that I want to get across to them, that is the actual act of writing down the implications of what they're doing is, I think, very helpful for students in sorting uh, this out, even though it's an, it's an expensive use of student and faculty time. Uh, clearly, at some point, students have to master the ability to write in our disciplines. At some point along the line, we need to have it in there. And when is it going to, to happen? It's too easy for people to say, well, somebody else uh, will do it. But it sacrifices uh, course content, right? That's the big uh, objection to it. And it also places um, assessment demands uh, on uh, the instructor in terms of doing it. We all bemoan getting a stack of, of, of papers uh, to grade. Uh, and in particular, we bemoan getting really bad student papers uh, to grade. And so one of my theses is that if I can sort of intervene and direct my attention at the points where students need the most help, it's going to benefit them and um, it's going to uh, benefit me. Um, so what I want to do is intervene where students uh, are likely to go astray. And one of the first ones is in terms of choosing the topic, right? The problem. Um, uh, what do you do when the first draft comes in and the topic is com and the student paper is completely off topic? That is, um, uh, yes, I can get them steered into the right topic, but they've sort of missed the benefit of the careful comments I like to give on a first draft in moving to the second draft. Secondly, uh, there's a real challenge that the kind of uh, work that I do in sort of uh, dealing with flaws in the analysis underlying the paper um, is quite different than the attention and focus I give to the uh, exposition uh, of the paper. Uh, and so if I can figure out a way to get the analytics right before the student starts to write the, the paper, we're all better uh, off. Um, that issue with analytics, if students are really stressed out, do I really understand what's going on under there? It's going to make it very hard for them to, yeah, sorry. Sorry, David. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, David. Can you explain what analytics, what's your definition of analytics? I'll, any kind of, um, the tools of the trade, if you will, the theory in, in economics, the basic notion of, of, of how we reach a particular result. So in the environmental economics course that I teach, we would argue that pollution of the environment is a market failure, and, we, and students would be expected to take themselves through the steps of uh, uh, how does a market failure result in the pollution uh, that we're seeing. Thank if you. they don't understand that, it's going to be hard for them to write a paper explaining you know, the Exxon Valdez uh, uh, oil spill. Thank you. Uh, so uh, the other part with getting the analytics right is if you're 
trying to write the paper and you're not at all confident that you have the underlying model right, you're not going to be able to move on from the stage of basically writing for yourself, of basically writing the equivalent of uh, an exam answer. Um, uh, and um, uh, what I, we want students to be able to do is to move towards writing for a target audience. So that's what I mean by drafting with the, uh, uh, with the audience in mind, thinking about the needs of the audience rather than the need of the, uh, of the, the, the writer. Um, uh, well, we've all been in the situation of getting a uh, first draft that really is the first draft, complete with no proofreading, um, and that's a problem. But I would go further and say that I don't think many students have really effective skills in critiquing their own work, reading their own work with a critical uh, eye. And so that's another point at which I want to be able to intervene in the, in, in the writing process. Um, and they're not very good at harnessing the comments uh, they get, at taking the comments on a first graph and turning that, figuring out what a kind of a strategy should they be using uh, in terms of revision. So my goal is to structure uh, uh, the, uh, my involvement in the writing process to try to intervene at these points where I think I can do the, uh, the most good. So uh, in economics, our uh, lower level electives will come after uh, a one semester introductory course in which students have been exposed to a lot of theory, the analytics uh, that I'm describing that they would be expected to use uh, uh, in a field course. So in my environmental economics course, we start with that assumption that they know it, uh, we review it, reinforce it, add some additional um, uh, theory to it, and then take them through uh, the content that we, that we need to cover. Um, what I basically do have added to the usual mix of midterms and problem sets two papers and an additional peer review assignment. And in doing that, I find that using this approach that I'm basically using the equivalent of two full classes out of the 28 classes that I have during the semester. That seems a sacrifice worth, worth making. And um, I realize that uh, over the years, taking this approach, I've drastically reduced the actual amount of time uh, engaging um, with student uh, writing, or the amount of time I spend with a pile of papers uh, in front of me. So let me first take you through, OK, so this is what I'm trying to do, organize my course or organize the part of my course that's related to writing with the idea of intervening uh, on these points. And let me take you through the timeline for the first paper. So by the end of week three, we will have done the review. We will have introduced the theory, the analytical framework that students need to be able to complete the first assignment. Um, uh, I asked them to uh, submit a copy of their paper topic, a quick a glance from me can tell me whether they've got it, whether it's, a, it's an okay paper to move forward on. I email them uh, my approval. Uh, then uh, they turn in week four to uh, thinking about do they have the analytics right. Uh, once we've confirmed that they have, and, and so what I basically do is have them bring a single sheet of paper uh, with the analysis uh, that they've done on it. Um, I have them break up into groups, and I pretty much find that for the most part, the versions of the analytic sheets that emerge after the group discussion has pretty much caught the major problems there. Nevertheless, I collect them. I give them a quick glance to find ones who still are, are, are having trouble with it, with the idea of returning it uh, to the next class. That then allows them to turn their attention to the problem of drafting. And I'll talk a little bit more about that. So they're devoting week five to it. I'm devoting only half of a class to this issue. By the end of week five, they have turned in their first draft. I then um, give each one a careful read. Um, and uh, then um, uh, return it to them. And they complete their final draft by the end of, of, of week six. Um, and so what I would like you to do, if I can hold the slide here, is ask you to read this uh, version of the paper. Now, maybe I'll do it since it's going to slip on us. For the first paper, pick an instance of environmental degradation and explain why it is occurring or has occurred using the theories of market failures we have discussed. The paper will be a success if the reader is convinced that a problem exists can explain the reason for the problem and has a sense of why the problem has not been corrected. Your economic analysis, likely a graph or two, will be the foundation of your explanation 
but the reader, reader should not have to master that analysis to understand the source of the problem. Okay, as written, this would be a fine exam, long, but a, nevertheless a fine exam question. So at this point, I'm trying to focus them on thinking like an economist and figuring out how they would answer it as an economist. But, and, and, and that's useful in terms of getting them through the analytics part of it. But it's not where I want to go in terms of the paper uh, assignment. I want them to shift to thinking about their audience. And here's their audience. The paper itself will be directed at a seminar of senior political science majors at another elite liberal arts college. So I want them to be thinking about that group, take the analysis, translate it for um, a, a lay uh, a analysis. And there's a reason why those political scientists care about what you're going to be uh, producing. OK, so that's what I'm trying to do with this week five engagement there. I asked them to bring to class, the first class of that week, a set of pre-draft notes in which they're answering a series of queries that I've given them to get them to focus on the assignment. So they're under context, organization, economic supporting argument. I've only listed the questions I asked them to be thinking about under the, the, the context heading. What I found is it's much, much too common for students after they get, quote, clear, on, clear, if you will, on the paper assignment, it's much too common for students to immediately go to an outline and start chugging down the information they have in it without thinking at all as to what they're really trying to accomplish with the paper. So I'm trying to get them to, sorry, trying to get them to answer these questions before they actually sit down to, uh, to do that uh, first draft. Again, um, they talk about it in their groups. They then revise their answers to these questions based on the group discussion. They submit that to me. Again, I'm just glancing at it to make sure they have coherent answers, <coughs> made a, have, have made the effort to answer all of these questions. Um, by far the most time consuming, the, the largest amount of time I spend engaging with student writing is when I get the first draft on paper one. I give them all very careful feedback uh, on the documents, trying to model for students what I think is a, is a useful approach um, uh, to critiquing a, a, a student paper. The second paper then uh, occurs at um, uh, the end of the semester, and it has basically the same structure, except that I'm stepping out of the process. Instead of reading the first draft, every student gets a peer review from two other students in the class. Now, in order to make sure that those peer reviews are going to be helpful, um, I incorporate into the class a two-part uh, peer review process in which we devote half of a class uh, to looking at student papers and looking at alternative both technologies and strategies for providing uh, peer reviews to the students. Um, and then they have to turn in to me a peer review of a sample paper. They're all getting the same paper to do, but and, they, and they're all coming with sort of very different styles of doing it, sorry. Um, uh, and, and, you know, that's the basis for them, I think, having, I have some confidence that they're going to be effective in terms of what they're giving their peers at the end of the semester. Other strategies that I'm sure many of you are using that I use to, to again, lower the cost but focus student attention is I use rubrics. Uh, uh, on what I'm looking for. This is the rubric for uh, the goals of the, the, the final paper. Um, and uh, so then I use a, a, a sheet like this that I put on top of the marked up uh, copy of the text that I'm returning to them. Um, uh, so the bottom line is, whoops, the bottom line is that there's, I have seen significant improvement from paper one to paper two. Increased uh, understanding on the analytics on the part of my students, uh, and I'm spending a heck of a lot less time uh, grading student writing, and I've only sacrificed two of the 28 class meetings. So at this point, um, in sort of tweaking this, and I tweak it every year, uh, the basic question I've been asking is finding ways to use technology to overcome the obstacles. When I first started using peer reviews in my classes, we were passing the paper copies in class, right? So they would bring the paper copy to class. They would give, bring two copies, give it to a classmate, and, uh, and, and they were off. Uh, I've benefited enormously from collaborating with uh, educational technologists, and Melanie is a terrific example thereof. 
Uh, so as David said, I'm Melanie. I'm part of the conference team and the EdTech team here at Bryn Mawr. And I just wanted to talk a little bit about uh, what David and I have been doing to um, work on using tech to uh, sort of expedite this peer review process. David is a really interesting example of what it's like for us to work with faculty um, because he came into the process with a really concrete idea of what he was trying to accomplish um, with this peer review process and how it needed to work. And it was sort of our job to um, figure out how the LMS that we use, which is Moodle, um, could manage that process. And I think May, who's presenting after us, is going to talk a lot about Moodle, so I probably will spend less time on that. Um, but I wanted to sort of note that David brings this both content knowledge about his course and um, ideas about uh, the goal of the peer review assignment and the structure. And then I was able to partner with him and bring um, the kinds of technologies that I use, which in, in this case were kind of straightforward using Moodle. Um, and then creating some instructional video to go along with that, and also the language that we use in our team around the digital competencies to think about sort of intentional ways that students can be using technology to support their learning. Um, so, oh my gosh, the timing on these slides is really interesting. So um, part of what we created um, for David's course um, was some different um, and new documentation for um, Moodle Workshop, which is the sort of module that we use for peer review. Um, we have sort of centralized locations for this uh, documentation to live, but what tends to happen is that we have a new tool available or somebody tells us they want to use something. We create some documentation, we throw it up online, and then they never tell us how it works. We never hear from them again. It's sort of out there in the void. This isn't the type of uh, we're not interfacing with Moodle in this particular way because we're not, you know, I'm not teaching classes, so I don't know how this documentation actually corresponds to somebody's real use. Um, so working with David, we actually have gone through some processes of review and revision um, on the documentation. Um, so we kind of have peer review of our own documentation, which has been really helpful for us. And we've gone through several different drafts of both a student-focused and a faculty-focused um, sort of step-by-step -step guide to how to set up the Moodle workshop features uh, and what needs to happen on the back end to make this process work. So that uh, collaboration with faculty has been really generative for us. Um, and we have much better documentation now uh, than we used to. And then the final um, thing that we've also worked on in this um, process um, is creating some instructional videos. This is quite a low-tech version. This actually was just a narrated PowerPoint that's now on YouTube. Um, that sort of guides students through how to use Adobe Acrobat or Adobe Reader, which we have on campus computers, to annotate digital copies of papers um, so that they can do it outside of class. We also have a video about how to like scan on our printers um, if you want to annotate in hard copy. Um, but this is just a super quick um, and pretty easy, uh, from my perspective, um, way to create that documentation. So I'm just going to play like one minute of this, um, just so you can get a sense of how um, sort of low the initial investment can be. And then we have reviewed this, although it's pretty quiet. Wow, sorry, everybody. It may be too quiet for us to hear. Um, but this is something that I have worked on um, over the course of the semester, again, reviewing with David to sort of improve, yeah, I think it's too quiet to hear, um, to improve these videos and we'll do probably another couple of drafts. Um, so that's sort of another example of ways that we as technologists have been able to partner with faculty to um, revise these resources. If you could show the last slide. Yes. That link will take you to um, a, pay, a, a document that includes all of the um, handouts that I use with my students, all of the assignments that I use with the, uh, with the students. Yeah. And we'll have the slides up online if you want to see the rubric or any of these other things um, at your leisure. Thank you.